Here we've got an FCC unit cell with red atoms on the corners and gray atoms on the faces. All of the atoms are identical except for the colors and they all have a radius of one angstrom. The first thing we're being asked uh, to solve is the edge length of the unit cell. The unit cell is cubic so each edge has the same length. To figure out what this length is it's helpful to look at the unit cell and we'll focus on just on the front face of the cell. Here I've got two different perspectives and it might be easiest to look just at the front face of it. We're going to do a little bit of geometry. We're trying to find the edge length A of the cube and the, probably the easiest way to do this is to recognize that we know the length of the diagonal of this right triangle. And that length is equal to 4 times the radius of each atom. So we've got an edge length of 4r. And each leg of the triangle has a length a, which we're trying to find. Pythagorean's theorem says that a squared plus a squared is equal to 4r squared. Solving for a squared, we're left with 16 divided by 2 times r squared. Solving for a, we get the square root of 8 times r. So a is equal to 2.83 multiplied by r, which in our case is equal to 1 angstrom. So we have an edge length of 2.83 angstroms. The next question we've got asks what direction, what crystallographic direction has the largest linear density? And there's a number of answers to this question. The thing to find out, or the thing to think about, is that the highest linear density would be a case in which the atoms are touching. And we see that occurring on the diagonals of each face of the cube. In this case, the direction that we're looking at would be as shown, which is going to be zero in the x direction because it's parallel to the front face and we're going to move over one unit in the y direction so we've got zero one and in this case a negative one in the z direction so I'm going to draw this vector as zero one negative one. We would get equivalent answers for the zero one one direction it's just the diagonal on the other side. The third question asks us to compute the linear density of atoms along the 1, 1 negative direction. So if we start in the upper left corner, uh, we've got a unit of 1 in the x direction, another unit in the y direction, and a negative 1 in the z direction. So what we're looking at is a distance that spans the diagonal of the unit cell. It may be easier to view this instead of a space filling model. We'll decrease the diameters of the atom so we can see a bit more clearly. Clearly. And here's the direction again that we're looking at is the 1, 1, negative 1 direction. We want to figure out the linear density along that line. It may be a little bit easier to see if I remove all of the atoms except for the ones on the diagonal. If I keep the atoms in full scale, it's clear that the linear density in this direction is going to be smaller than what we saw before. It's going to be smaller because these atoms are not touching along these directions. If I use my measuring device again, you might you might think that there are four atoms along the length of that line, but remember the atoms at the end are shared between adjacent lines. So what I find it useful to do is just move the line a little bit and then recognize that there's only three atoms along the length of that line. So the linear density in that direction is going to be equal to three atoms divided by the length of that line. Because I'm using a unit cell that is three times longer on each side, I've got 3a by 3a by 3a, and the length of that line squared is going to be equal to 3 times 3a squared, or the length of the line is going to be equal to the square root of 27 times a, which is equal to 2.83 angstroms. And finally, we're being asked to calculate the linear density along the 2, 1, negative 1 direction just shown here. If we look at a few more unit cells, we're trying to figure out the linear density of atoms along this line. So here the linear density, again, we only have one atom along the length of that line, and the square of the length of that line, by way of Pythagorean's theorem, is going to be equal to a squared, based on the x direction, plus one half a squared on the y direction plus another one half a squared in the z direction. This means the length of our line is going to be equal to the square root of 2 multiplied by a. And the length of this line is going to be equal to 4 angstroms. So the linear density along that direction is going to be one atom for every 4 angstroms or a linear density of 0.25 atoms 
per angstrom.